Hi, this is Dr. McCord. I'm going to talk to you today about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. We're going to start out with the idle gas law, which is PV equals NRT. We're also going to solve for P here and just get it written in terms of the number of moles, the temperature, and the volume. We're also going to hold the temperature and volume constant so that we can split out the RT over V term. We're going to call that a constant. And this really allows us to kind of think about pressure only in terms of the number of moles. What that means is pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles. So it's real easy to think about the calculations here. So if you double the moles, you double the pressure. You triple the moles, you triple the pressure. You get the idea. So we're going to first start with a container here. Uh, if you need to know what the container size is and the temperature, we'll go ahead and give you that. Um, 244.7 liters at 25 degrees C. Now we're going to put one mole into this container and we get 0.1 atmospheres of pressure. We're going to then double this up to two moles and we're going to get 0.2 atmospheres of pressure. And as you can guess, if we go to 3 moles, we get 0.3 atmospheres of pressure. And this becomes really easy to just keep going. Count 4 moles, 5 moles, um, go all the way to 6 moles, you'll get 0.6 atmospheres of pressure. You go to 7, you'll get 0.7. And we'll take this all the way up to 8 just to make a point. But we really want to shift our focus now into several containers combining to make a mixture. So let's imagine we have three containers like this and explore Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. So here's three containers. We're going to label them A, B, and C for the gases that we're going to put in them. We're going to put 10 moles of gas A. We're going to put in 6 moles of gas B and 4 moles of gas C. That's going to give us 1 atmosphere for A. 0.6 atmospheres for B and 0.4 atmospheres for C. We're also going to quit counting in moles. Uh, we don't need moles to do Dalton's Law, so we're going to just think about it in terms of pressures. And now we're going to combine these amounts and make a mixture. So we're going to take each of these three containers and now push all those moles together into one container. It's easy to do the math. We now have 20 total moles in the container, and it turns out that the pressures add up in the same exact way, and we get 2.0 atmospheres of pressure in the container. So to summarize, we've got 20 moles total. We've got two atmospheres of pressure. Now you need to remember the idle gas law does not care what kind of gases you have. So 20 moles gives you 20 atmospheres. Now I'm splitting things back out on the right to show you the separate containers, and I'm also showing you the mixture. I'm going to put a dividing line here to show you that there's the two different ways we think. On the left is what the mixture holds. We just count number of moles. We don't care what they are. But on the right is more of the way a chemist sees things when he's looking at a mixture. We really see it as the three separate partial pressures that combine to give the total pressures. That's exactly what Dalton's Law is all about. So the way I see this is partial pressure of A, the partial pressure of B, and the partial pressure of C all combine to give the overall total pressure in the mixture. If I take all those quantities and make a mathematical relationship out of them, I have the very definition of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. We can also state this law in words. Dalton's Law simply says that the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. It's a very handy law and it works for as many gases as you have in a mixture as you want. This has been Dr. Paul McCord talking to you about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Have a good day.